morning, First Baptist. Today is April the 26th, 2020. We are still in uh, social uh, distancing, unfortunately. Uh, I did want to uh, show you a picture. Uh, this is you guys. It's an old one. Uh, we still. I don't want you to think that we forgot what you look like. So there you go. Terry zooming in. Kobe says hi. Um, and uh, so I want to give you some announcements this morning. I hope and pray that you guys are doing well. And uh, I do want to get uh, uh, a couple of things out there for you. First, uh, don't forget to tune in to the Facebook page and also my, my Facebook page uh, for daily devotions that are... I try to do it around 9 o'clock, but sometimes it gets a little later depending on how things are uh, working out. So uh, that's daily during the week, five days a week. Um, the Sunday messages, and I haven't done a chalk talk for a couple weeks. That one's coming as well. I want to do another chalk talk. Uh, those are available also, not only on the on the First Baptist Facebook page, but also on the website. Uh, and I'll give you our website uh, address again, if you got a pencil and paper handy. It is www.firstbaptistchurch nantiglow.org O-R-G, okay? So make sure you stay tuned up on that course. If there's any change in our scheduling, uh, you will see it either on the news or uh, in one of the papers, the Tribune, the Journal, whatever works for you. Um, also, if you know of somebody who does not have technology or the internet, uh, we are making copies of all of these things except for the daily devotionals we're making copies on DVDs that we can deliver uh, to folks if they would like to watch this, if they've got a DVD player. So please let us know. Uh, contact me. Contact Jennifer at the church, and we can make sure we get you hooked up, okay? Uh, another announcement is that the chronological scripture readings for one year are available to you. Once again, just contact the church or me, and we'll make sure that we get a copy uh, sent out to you, or we can deliver it, whatever you need, okay? Now, um, we thank you once again for your faithfulness with the tithes. Uh, we know how important that is to the church. Uh, if you'd like to do so, uh, the church address once again is First Baptist Church uh, 271, oh, P.O. Box 271, sorry, <laughs> Nancy Globe, P.A., 15943. Okay, one more announcement. We have received the Camp Mantle Wagon brochures for 2020. Now, in spite of all the uncertainty that's going on right now and how scheduling is going to be weird, they still would like us to send in uh, the registrations for our students that would like to attend the summer camps this year. Uh, and now I want to emphasize that this is grades 2 through 2020 graduates, okay? And there are different weeks set up for each one, if you're not familiar with all of this, okay? Now, I want to emphasize this especially because this is at no cost to you or your family. These students, what we would love to do is have your child come, or children, and invite friends to come with them if they would like to. If they are hesitant in coming and they want somebody there that they know, we would be happy to cover the expense of all of that from the First Baptist Teen Fund. So keep that in mind. We're going to get those uh, brochures available to you. Don't worry about it. But please, once again, if you're interested or you, ha you want to get some more information or your kids are interested in going, please contact me or Jennifer at the church, and we'll get you the information that you need, okay? Let's pray right now. Father, um, once again, we come before you. <laughs> we come before you, Lord. We're not in the same place. We're not in the same seats. We're not even in the same building. But, Lord, we're here in your midst, and you are here, and we just pray that your Holy Spirit would come upon us right now. Lord, that anything hindering your Holy Spirit right now, whether it's worries, whether it's frustrations, whether it's any kind of distraction right now, 
and especially sin, we pray that, Lord, uh, it would be eliminated. Anything hindering your Holy Spirit, Lord, that we would confess it. And in the power of Jesus' name, Satan would flee right now. Lord, we need you. We're a needy people. We are separated by geography, but we are together in our love for you. Bless this time, Lord, that we sing worship to you. May you be pleased with it. And Lord, bless the message and the messenger as we move forward with this service. Lord, once again, we ask this in the matchless name of Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen.
The title of this morning's message is, I am a sinful man. I not only looked in the mirror at this one, but uh, also God brought to mind different individuals that maybe have been away from God for a long time. Maybe it's you, if you're tuning in. Terry and I, uh, first of all, uh, draw your sword and turn in your Bibles to Luke chapter 5. It's in the New Testament. Matthew, Mark, Luke. It's the third book of the New Testament. Turn to chapter 5 of Luke right now. Uh, Terry and I have been really digging this uh, video series called The Chosen. And uh, if you are interested in this, you got to catch this. It's at studios.vidangel. That's V I D A N G E L dot com slash The Chosen. And you can get online and check this thing out. It's really, really excellent. And the installment that we watched on Sunday night, uh, Jesus is about to call his disciples, his followers, okay? Now, last week, if you remember, uh, we got acquainted with Thomas, you know, doubting Thomas, so forth. But this week, this one is about Peter. Now, according to Mark chapter 1, verses 21 through 39, you have to look there now, but Jesus had enlisted Peter, Andrew, James, and John uh, earlier, okay, they had traveled with him to Capernaum and uh, throughout Galilee, but then they went back to their vocation, which was fishing, and it's there that we pick this up, now watch, Luke chapter 5 verse 1, one day, as Jesus was standing by the lake of Genesaret, the people were crowding around him and listening to the word of God. He saw at the water's edge two boats left there by the fishermen who were washing their nets. Now, the nets needed to be washed or they would dry out and they would rot. So for these fishermen, they really needed to maintain their equipment, right? All right, now... In this, in this uh, installment, in this uh, episode, Peter is depicted as being in, in dire straits. Now, now listen, I want you to, I'm, I'm, I'm going to try to illustrate this to you in a way that becomes very personal for you, as it does for me. Peter's depicted as being in dire straits. He's far behind on his taxes and in trouble with the Romans. He had made many bad decisions and was struggling in his relationship with his wife, who felt he had forsaken his faith in God. Any of that sound familiar to you? Don't know. But anyway, it depicts him so desperate that he fishes all night in order to try to catch enough fish to be able to stave off the Romans and his taxes and so forth. And he's not successful at all. His brother Andrew rose out with his partners, Zebedee and his sons, James and John, the th sons of thunder, and they decide to help him. Still, no luck. Well, daybreak comes, and they head in towards the shore, very dejected can imagine how tired they were after fishing all night. There's a group of people on the shoreline, as Luke has described, and Jesus is speaking to them. Now, they pull their boats close to the shore. Now visualize this. The fishermen are coming in. They see Jesus probably from the back, and they see this crowd of people that are there. So they're getting in closer to the shore, and, uh, and they begin to work in their nets. They're, they're going to clean their nets up. Jesus asks Peter if he can stand in his boat in order to speak. And so Peter reluctantly agrees. Now, <laughs> watch this, because this is really cool. Peter's a captive audience right now, okay? Jesus is in his boat. I, I want you to get this. 
Jesus is in your boat. He's speaking to you right now. And if you're paying attention to his word right now, he's speaking right to you, not just to Peter or to me. <clears throat> Excuse me. Now, regardless of the description that this depiction adds to Peter, uh, his story, I want to emphasize the fact that Peter was me, and maybe you, knowing Christ, knowing what he did, uh, acquainted with his call for me to change my life. And I wonder if you can relate to that right now. Can you relate to Peter? Jesus is right in front of us right now. Verse 3 says this, He got into one of the boats, the one belonging to Simon, and asked him, now watch, this is significant, he asks him to put out a little from shore. Just take it out a little bit so that I can talk to these folks and they can all see me. Whatever the reason, put out just a little bit. So Simon obeys this seemingly insignificant request that Jesus makes, right? So when he had finished speaking, Jesus says to Simon, put out into deep water and let down the nets for a catch. Now listen, watch this. Because Peter follows the first request. And if Peter had not followed the second request from Jesus, which was more of a command if you think about it, Peter would never have experienced a miracle. Watch this. <clears throat> so, <laughs> he says, put out of the deep water. Let down the nets for a catch. Now, now Peter is pretty weary, all right? He's pretty impatient. He's pretty dejected. He's pretty frustrated. Uh, and that describes me at times. And uh, so Simon answers him like this. Simon says, Master, we've worked hard all night and haven't caught anything. But because you say so, I will let down the nets. Now, watch what happens. This is how it was depicted on this episode. All of a sudden, now they're out in deeper water. All of a sudden, Simon's boat jerks to port. It looks like it's going to capsize. All of a sudden, it just crashes this way. And the water starts to froth with all these fish. And they're in the nets. And Peter looks and he hollers for help. And Zebedee and James and John row their boat over. They get out of the boat. They're trying to grab a hold of this net to keep the, the boat from capsizing, to keep the nets from breaking. It says in verse 6, when they had done so, they caught such a large number of fish <clears throat> that their nets began to break. So they signaled their partners. Andrew and Simon signaled their partners. And they came and helped them. And they came and filled both boats so full that they were about to sink. <laughs> Watching this was amazing. Because these guys start to shout. They're so excited. They're laughing. And they're shouting. And they're awkwardly trying to keep from losing the catch, losing their balance, losing the boats. They can't believe it. <clears throat> when he gathers his wits about him, Peter climbs out of the boat and wades to Jesus on shore. Verse 8 says, When Simon Peter saw this, he fell at Jesus' knees and said, Go away from me, Lord. I am a sinful man. For he and all his companions were astonished at the catch of fish they had taken. And so were James and John, the sons of Zebedee, Simon's partners. <clears throat> you know, these verses don't do justice to Peter. 
You have to put yourself in Peter's place. You're overwhelmed by all the responsibilities that you have. You have so many things that are on your mind. <clears throat> and if you're like me, so many of them are out of your control. We just can't fix them. We don't have the wisdom. We don't have the discernment. Simon drops to his knees and he's exhausted. And he's overwhelmed with guilt. The guilt that comes when we recognize the fact that we're not okay. We're not good. We're sinful. And we're in the presence of a holy, righteous, sovereign God. <clears throat> he just, he's just overwhelmed with it. Maybe you are right now, too. I've been there. Satan just crushes us with our sinfulness and with our pride. And we ourselves bear that every day. He stares at the ground. Peter stares at the ground. <clears throat> tries to wrap his mind around everything that he's just witnessed. When I saw this, I remembered that moment. This hit me so hard. I remember that moment when Jesus confronted me. And he came and met me where I was. Simon finally looks up. <laughs> and tears fill his eyes. <clears throat> everything, everything that's burdened him. Listen, I don't care what kind of artistic license they took in relating this incident. I'm not interested in debating anything about how Simon was depicted. I'm not interested in that. Because if we, if we are, then we miss the whole point. <clears throat> In this passage of Scripture, I see me in Simon Peter. I am a sinful man. I see a man who acknowledges his mistakes, his sinfulness, who looks back on a life that has been misspent, wasted on decision-making that was self-serving. See if this registers with you. <clears throat> I see a man living a lifestyle that Satan had convinced me would be good enough. That God would let me into heaven because of my ignorance. Oh, he'll let me in. I don't know that I'm supposed to be surrendering my sins to God. I, I don't know... God, you'll let me in, even though I don't change my lifestyle. You know, it'll put to death my sinfulness, my sin nature. Finally, the realization of Jesus' grace hits. It doesn't matter what you've done. It doesn't matter where you've been. All that matters is this moment right now. That... That sweet release that comes from Jesus' voice, from his face. Can you see him? Can you picture him right now before you? That subtle smile that he shines on you. Your pain melts away. Your fear flees. You breathe in this hope the weight of all your burdens, all the junk and all the sinfulness that you've hauled through your life to this point <clears throat> is lifted. The words, listen, I hope you can relate to this, because those words that Satan growls at you, God won't forgive those sins. It's too late for you. Did you ever hear that? Satan says it's too late for you. You're okay. 
you don't need to surrender in order to go to heaven. All the lies and falsehoods are drowned out by the heavens rejoicing because just one person has recognized Jesus Christ as their Savior, like Peter did. <laughs> Looking into that face and hanging, handing over all our worries and all our pain, that's what he wants. Jesus said to Simon, don't be afraid. He didn't say, that's okay, Peter. He didn't say, it'll be all right. <laughs> he just says, don't be afraid. From now on, you will fish for people. <laughs> Simon and Andrew, James and John, men, sinners just like me, just like you with nothing special or extraordinary to set them apart from others. They rejoice. I rejoice today. The Messiah has chosen them, and today the Messiah has chosen you as well. You will need to convince yourself you don't need him because you need to convince yourself that you do. <clears throat> verse 11 says so they pulled their boats up on shore they left everything and followed him will you <clears throat> pull your boat up on the shore today will you leave everything and follow him what will you do with him today <laughs>
They're struggling, Lord. You know that. You, nothing surprises you. You're omnipotent. You know everything. But they don't realize, the ones that are watching this right now, they don't realize it. But you had a divine appointment with them today, right here, just like you did with Simon Peter on the shore of the Sea of Galilee. This was a divine appointment. And they're watching this right now. I hope they haven't turned it off. But Lord, that they have come to their, to their realization that there is no other way to eternal life except through you. We cannot be too bad and we'll never be good enough. We can't add or subtract anything to the salvation that only comes through your son, Jesus Christ. So Lord, it's my prayer right now that folks would surrender that they would acknowledge their sinfulness, confess their sins. Lord, I'm a sinner. Lord, that they would recognize that you are their only source of salvation. And Lord, that they would make you Lord. Bless them. Bless us, Lord, with good health. Restore us, Lord, that we might be able to join together once again and worship as a church, all together in the same place. But right now, Lord, help us not to waste an opportunity right now to point people to you from where we are. May we please you. May we praise you. May we give you glory. In Jesus' name.